Hi, I'm Andy, and I'm here to teach you about sensory transduction. How do we receive sensations from the outside world? For each of your senses, there must be a way for the sensation to reach your brain to be perceived. For example, your eyes have special receptors built to receive and process light, and your eyes have nerves leading directly to your brain. But how does the sense of touch work, or your ability to hear? There are various ways for an action potential to be activated, and one of these is pressure. There are certain pressure-activated ion channels which open or close when exposed to external pressure. For example, the pressure of your pencil against your hand as you hold it. And the opening or closing of these channels causes a chain reaction of messages to your brain, causing you to perceive the pressure of the pencil in your hand. You can think of pressure-gated channels as similar to a revolving door. They are only open when you actively push them, allowing you to step in or out of a building, and without continuous pressure, they are closed. In the case of a revolving door, people can no longer pass through, and in the case of an ion channel, ions can no longer pass through. Today, this will be demonstrated with cockroach legs. The central ideas behind physical sensation in cockroaches are the same as in humans, even though cockroaches are far less complex generally. We will be hooking up cockroach legs to a machine which makes a little sound for every action potential made within the leg. You will be able to touch the leg and hear the action potentials induced by that pressure, which would normally lead to the cockroach feeling touch. In humans, sensory transduction is far more complex, with neurons dedicated to sensing pressure, texture, temperature, etc. evenly interwoven throughout your skin. Each different kind of sensation is mediated by a different type of receptor. There are even hair cells dedicated to sensing movement of hairs in both humans and cockroaches. And once the experiment begins, you will be able to hear the action potentials activated by touching the hairs on a cockroach leg. On the subject of the hairs on a cockroach leg, the sense of hearing in humans is actually produced by hair cells in the inner ear which respond to acoustic vibrations and changes in pressure. At a basic level, the action potentials induced by the movement of the hairs on cockroach legs are the same as the action potentials induced by the activation of hair cells in your inner ear. You never would have thought that your sense of hearing is produced by the vibrations of hairs. This is an effective demonstration of the incredible variety of sensory cells throughout the body. Today we are going to talk about sensory transduction of neurons. Today we will also be doing a cool experiment with a device called a backyard brain spiker box. Later, you will have the opportunity to design your own experiment with a backyard brain and a cockroach leg. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand sensory transduction, how to use a backyard brain, and how to design your own experiments. Let's get started. Open your two-channel spiker box. Inside, you will find an electrode with two metal pins at the end. Plug this electrode into the right channel For our demonstration, this is the only setup you will need. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Maria, who will demonstrate how to anesthetize the cockroach. So now, we'll be demonstrating how to anesthetize your cockroach. You will need a bucket um, or cup of ice, a live cockroach, and scissors. So now, we are going to grab a cockroach and cut one of its legs off for our experiment. It's easier to put it in a cup. You just have to stay calm with your cockroach. So take the cockroach, put your body in the ice so that it slows down. So they will calm down as you put them in ice. Once your cockroach is calm, you can grab it, take the scissors, and cut the part right next to the abdomen.
So now put the cockroach back into the bucket with all of the other cockroaches. And don't worry, we are not killing the cockroach and its leg will grow back eventually. Now that we have our specimen, let's get back to the demonstration. Once the leg is secure onto the cork board, take your electrode and place one in the upper thigh and one in the lower part of the thigh. You may move around, so if your partner wants to help you, And then one in the lower. There you go. Now that the device and specimen is set, let's do our demonstration. As mentioned before in the lesson about sensory transduction, pressure gated channels are like revolving doors. Without applied pressure, you can't get through the door. The same idea can be applied to action potentials involved in sensory transduction. For our demonstration, a lead pencil will act as our pressure. So when I touch the leg, we are applying pressure, opening pressure gated channels, causing action potentials to fire. We can observe this act firing action potential from the spike in frequency coming from the box. Now, let's turn on our box and listen to firing action potentials when I touch the hair on the leg. The change in frequency that you're hearing is action potential firing when I apply pressure to the leg. Now that you know what to expect, I'm going to turn to Vanessa, who will show you how to visually see action potentials firing. If you haven't already downloaded the Backyard Brains um, Spike Recording Program, go to, pause this video, go to the website, and download it and install it on your computer. Okay, so now that you have your program, you need your aux cord, the USB, your spiker box with the cockroach leg attached, a pencil, and your part. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one end of the aux cord and you are going to plug it in to this um, check right there. Make sure your box is turned off. And now you're going to take the other aux cord end and plug it into the um, purple headphone jack. And now you're going to plug in your USB to the computer. Make sure everything's closed so that um, the program can detect your USB. And now you're going to open the spike recording program. It should look something like this because we haven't turned on the spike recording box. Go to the gear as follows. So make sure your speakers are muted, that the microphone to USB audio device on the left is green, and that the following are all black. OK, so now you hit your gear icon and you're back. Your spiker box is turned on now, and you zoom out. That's in, and that is out so you can see it. If you want to mess with the time so it can go slower or faster, you can do that with scrolling. Um, okay. So now, put the lead of my pencil. I am going to touch the cockroach leg softly. So these spikes right here, those are action potentials. So let's softly touch one of the hairs. Do you see that? Those are action potentials being fired. So the pencil lead is acting as the physical um, pressure when touching the hair leg. Those are all different action potentials. So now let's touch the main part of the leg with a lot of pressure. For a um, relatively long time. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Okay. So the pencil lead pressure is your sensory transduction. And now you see 
action potential is being fired. So now you get to play with it by creating your own experiment, which Maria will introduce you to. Now that we know how to visually see it and hear it, now you can get to try it yourself. Before turning on the device, let's design your own experiment. Here are some suggestions for different areas you can touch on the leg uh, to design your own. Uh, for example, you can try it with a Sharpie. Um, you know, it's not on, but you can always try it with the Sharpie and you can hear it. Or you can try it with an ice cube. Turn on your spiker box and see what happens. So as you can see, there's different ways um, to conduct an experiment for yourself. So now that you have an experimental design, your group needs to develop a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated uh, prediction based on what you know or have learned. Given with um, what you know, now about sensory transduction, what do you predict will happen when you touch different parts of the cockroach like? <laughs>